you a sense of how great the Secrets class really is, how far it goes back, how much it's grown. Just It's just been a wonderful trip for me doing this at my level. <laughs> so. This is a learning experience about you. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Okay, I can tell you that David was raised in Bennettsville and played in the Clemson Band, and that Rhonda was raised in Walkerboro and has a beautiful singing voice, and the two met at Clemson. David has been at Bunker Street since God was a small child. <laughs> Rhonda has been at his side the entire time, although Rhonda is younger. <laughs> they spend their time loving God and then loving each other. David is the putty that keeps Bunkum Street together. <laughs> His dedication, commitment, sincerity, organization, and humor make him a special person who works hard helping others to know God. Rhonda is a loyal, hardworking, and devoted nurse at Greenville Hospital <laughs> System, and she is also working very hard on her master's degree. She is very artistic, creates beautiful jewelry, and loves anything crafty. <laughs> Their most beautiful creations are the two children, Bethany Comstock and Derek Stubbs. And we thank you, David and Rhonda, for sharing this very special time with us. And we know that your time is precious, so we really appreciate that. And we thank you again for coming back. We can't wait to hear what you have to say. They said that I've been I've been at the church since God was a small child. From the looks of that uh, slideshow, I've been there since y'all were small. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you, I enjoyed the one slide of uh, Fred Barker and me, and me. We were together. I tell you, Fred Fred has aged a lot better than I have. That's for sure. That's for sure. You you folks must be gloves for punch. <laughs> Because first of all, you show all these slides of yourselves when you look good. <laughs> Especially you men. <laughs> you guys are really bad on it. And uh, then you have us back for the second time in three years, so I don't know what in the world y'all are thinking about. I also was a little bit worried. Um, as I was watching the slides tonight, I saw a lot of Buncombe Street staff people. None of them are there anymore. <laughs> Anyway, I'm here, to, I'm here this weekend to talk to you about David, not me, <laughs> the real one, the great one, the wonderful one, the one that we can learn a lot from. Of course, one of the most compelling stories and wonderful stories in the Bible is the story of David. <clears throat> Several months ago, um, Jeannie and Carolyn came and they asked me if I would do this again, and I said, okay, and then they said, what's your topic? Said, oh, man. So I said, okay, I need to come up with something where it's going to be easy to talk about it, where there's a lot of information. So I said, okay, let's talk about David, because there's a ton of information, and I don't know how I'm going to get it all in, but I'm going to try, okay? Uh, my first question to you is this, because I'm not up here to, to lecture to you. David is a man after God's own heart. What does that mean? Not all at once. <laughs> what does that mean? That's, what, that's how David has been described. A man after God's own heart. I am going to tell you a few things about David, okay? The word David in Hebrew means favorite or beloved. David was the first king to unite <coughs> Judah and Israel. He was the second king of Israel, as you know. He was the first to receive the promise from God that the Messiah, the Savior of the world, would come from his line. He was the great-grandson of Ruth and Boaz. He's named in the Bible. His name appears in the Bible over a thousand times. And he is named several times in the New Testament. He conquered Jerusalem. Now, I didn't know this. You know, the children of Israel, they come into the promised land. Israel, they come into the promised land, right? Come into Jericho and all that kind of thing, and they start taking over Canaan the land of milk and honey. 450 years later, David is their king, and he takes Jerusalem. They had never taken it before. The Jebusites owned it. The Jebusites, it was a fortress, and they had never taken it before. David is the one who took Jerusalem. 
450 years of futility ended with David. He rules Israel for 40 years. He makes it the largest kingdom that it's ever been or, ever, or, or has ever been because the kingdom of Israel during the time that David is ruling stretches from the boundary of Egypt to the Euphrates River. So that means in today's world, that would be the northern part of Saudi Arabia. It would be Israel. It would be Syria. It would be Jordan. It would be most of Iraq. That's how much territory David had control of during the time that he was the king of Israel. 